Hallelujah. And now I want us to all stand on our feet as we get ready for the word of God. Hallelujah. For the word of God from God himself through our pastor. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate as he comes. Give glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, we are grateful this morning, grateful that, Lord, it's you who chose us. We did not choose you, you chose us. That it pleased you, Lord, to call us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We are grateful <clears throat> for this grace we are in we stand and rejoice in hope of your glory. We're grateful, Lord, that you made us heirs, joint heirs with your son, Jesus Christ. We're grateful. The Lord, you've been mindful of us to bless us, to increase us more and more. Grateful that your hand has been upon us, Lord, for good. We are grateful, Lord, that you preserved our going out and our coming in. We are grateful, Father, that we continue to this day because of the help we've received from you. You're a shield for us, our glory and the lifter up of our heads. We're grateful that, Father, we go from strength to strength as we appear before you. We're grateful that, Lord, as we look up unto you, our faces are lightened. Our faces are made right, radiant. Our lives are changed by you. We are grateful that by the blood of your Son, we can come with boldness. We can enter in with boldness. in mercy to receive grace for this journey we thank you and we bless you we gathered here Lord in your name this morning let that which is pleasing in your sight be done in this place today let your word go forth and achieve your purposes. Accomplish your good and pleasing and perfect will in our lives and through our lives. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Yield ourselves to you this morning. A man can receive nothing except it be given him from above. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. The Father of lights. Let your name be magnified. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we prayed and believed. Everybody say it, amen. And amen, you may have your seats. Okay. Appreciate the band, please. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Just want to bring to a close today what we've been looking at the last two weeks. The power of the mind, or as a man thinketh. Proverbs 23, verse 5. Proverbs 23 and verse 5. I trust you had a good week. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. seven for as he thinketh in his heart so is he eat and drink saith he to thee but his heart is not with thee we say the man is literally what he thinks his character being the complete sum of all his thoughts. That a man cannot be different from his thought. That it's impossible or difficult to think one way and live a different way. That as a man thinks, so his life is bound, is obligated, or it's a foregone conclusion. It's already concluded that as he thinks, so he will become. He said the body is a servant of the mind. I remember a story once of a young man who was doing this high bar games gymnast. And he came to a challenge and uh, He was, was having, was jittery, was having butterflies in the stomach. Like, uh, was it Paris or Paris, the one who just broke the world record? The husband was saying she had butterflies in her stomach. And the coach looked at him and knew he was capable. So he told the young man, what you do is throw your heart over the bar and your body will follow. Just throw your heart over the bar and your body will follow. That if your mind is over the bar, your body that is a servant to the mind will have no alternative but to follow. Think yourself over the bar. Man's mind may be likened to a garden, you see may be intelligently cultivated or, or allowed to run wild. We say the outer conditions of a person's life will always be found to be in line with his inner state. That your inner state cannot be saying one thing and you experience a different thing on the outside. Because what is Inside, ultimately, is what comes out of the mouth. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
You cannot have a thoughts that are inconsistent. Let me say that again. You cannot pronounce what is inconsistent with what you harbor or dwell on in your mind. We say the circumstance does not make a man. It merely reveals him to himself. That you can't say that I'm hateful because they've made me. Or the circumstance that I dwell among hateful people, therefore I'm hateful. It's possible that those who are around you can influence. But ultimately, a man lives from the inside. From the thoughts of his heart. You know, the other day, I was actually thinking when I was looking at this. Who makes a seed grow? That's a question. Who makes a seed grow? Yeah? Who makes a Is it God who makes a seed grow? Let me get some of you who, who are religious. Is it God who makes a seed grow? Okay, the soil. Thank you. The seed itself. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wow, thank you. It's a great answer. There's a principle within the seed that all it needs, as my brother is saying, are the right conditions. You don't put a seed on the ground and go for three days prayer and fasting for God to make it grow. <laughs> you come back from your fasting and find the seed has died. You put the seed on the ground, you provide the conditions. The Bible says this, the seed brought forth fruit, the trees brought forth fruit which had its seed in itself. So the tree was in the seed. The tree was sleeping in the seed. All it needed was the conditions. That God has put in the seed a principle that if you provide it with the conditions that it needs for it to grow, it will produce after itself. The same way with thoughts, the mind of a man. Thoughts are seeds. All they require is the right condition of the mind. I told you last time that the devil doesn't need to touch you. All he needs to do is just sow a seed in your mind and keep watering it, keep providing you or you in co collaboration with him Providing the conditions for the seed to grow. And so circumstance does not make the man. It just provides an opportunity for that which has been growing to be revealed. I just need to step on your toe. 
for that to provide an opportunity for that which has been growing inside you to manifest. So I step on your foot. I call you a name that you don't like. That's That's a stimulus, if you may call it. It's a provocation. Your response over here, there's a space in between here. Now, how... I don't want to get complicated. I just want to teach simply. Your response... Depends on how you've been watering the seed that is in your mind. That the response here cannot be different than that which you've been watering in your mind. Good thoughts bear good fruit. Bad thoughts, bad fruit. Matthew 12, 33 says, either make the tree good and the fruit will be good. Matthew 12, 33. I'm just building up. We'll come, we're coming to what we need to look at today. For those who have not been here, either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit good. Corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. Either make the tree good. It's not God who's making the tree good. God has provided a principle. That's why he says, work out your own salvation. It's not God who's working it out. God has put it in. It's your responsibility to work it out. Colossians says, put to death, therefore, evil desires. It's you, not God. Your growth is not dependent on God. Okay, I know that might sound controversial for some. There was this man who, who had a great farm. And a man driving by said, wow, you have a great farm. Sure, God has blessed you. Look at what God has done. And the man said, uh, believe you've had that story, said you should have seen it when God had it all by himself. <laughs> when there was no man to till the land, to work the land, to work a principle that God has put in place. Somebody can come and say, hey, look at what the Lord has done. Look at your spouse. Look at your children. It's not right to remove the man element from what you can see. It says God had not caused things to grow because there was no man to manage. Your growth is a principle just the same way there's a seed. You're provided with the right conditions. And growth is a natural consequence. You don't have to pray. You don't have to fast. Provide it with the right conditions. Thoughts are seeds. This man, James Allen, the one who wrote, as a man think it, he says, thought is the fount of action, life, and manifestation. Thought 
is the fount of action, life, and manifestation. Make the fountain pure, and all will be pure. Make the fountain pure, and all will be pure. You might say that's not in the Bible, but we just read, make the fruit good. Make the tree good, and the fruit will be good. That thought is a fountain, is a spring of life, of manifestation. I know some of you may be saying, and that's not the Bible, then let's read the Bible. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4, verse 23. I don't think we have this version. Contemporary English version says, Carefully guard your thoughts, because they are the source of true life. The one that you possibly know, it says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The Good News Translation says, be careful how you think your life is shaped by your thoughts. Don't just read one version. Get simpler and explanatory versions. But be careful. That carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true Life that as a man thinketh, so is he until tomorrow. A man cannot be different from his thoughts. That if you give room to hateful thoughts. All you need is just a place for your hate to happen. Jesus told them, Matthew 5, 28, you've heard it said that if a man, what does it say? But I say unto you, whosoever, go back to verse 27. You've added that it was said by them of all time, thou shalt not commit adultery. In the old time, the focus was on the act. On the outside. That's why he told Samuel, man look, God looks not as a man looks. Man looks on the outside, but God looks on the inside because he knows as a man thinks, as he is in his heart, so is he. That men always miss it because by the time we are looking at the outside, the person had already become, all he was waiting for is an opportunity for him to manifest. That is not defeated at the point of defeat. That he was defeated right from the place of thought. That Mephibosheth comes to, to David and a table has been laid before him. But all along he has harbored thoughts that have made him to see himself as a dog. And he speaks according to that which it is in his heart. That it's impossible. That's why a lot of the battles, a lot of the battle, the fight is in your mind. The enemy knows if he can just corrupt your mind, 
It doesn't need anything else. If it can just defile the seat of thought. So he says, you've heard it said, of all time. By the time you see the act, it's too late. I told you, the thief is not a thief when he steals. The gossiper is not a gossiper when they gossip. They were already... The man or woman does not fall when you see it. They already offered enough conditions for the thought to keep growing. Remember we said the thought is a fountain of life, of action and manifestation. So you saw, and nothing wrong with seeing. You saw a nice car, because I know you think I'm going somewhere else. So you saw a nice car. And it's good you appreciate it. You say, wow, this is a nice car. And you leave it there. But you see a nice car. And a thought comes in, why is it that he has and I don't have? Oh, if only I had it. And you start coveting. You're already in sin, even before. Your sinful internal nature has an opportunity to be revealed. Are we together? That you're not in sin at the point that we see a manifestation of that which has been growing, that which you've been cultivating. See, the mind is like a garden. Your colleague gets promoted. You know, I've been working harder than him or her. How is it? The enemy sows a thought. Hmm? Your brother gets blessed and lifted up. Say, I've been more faithful than him. Well, the Bible says, who are you to judge another man's servant to his master? He stands to his master, he falls. Who turned you into a judge? I know there's a place for judging, brethren. But who turned you? That you can decide and feel that you've been more faithful than me. I've been more faithful than that brother. Why is he blessed before me? So you are both the blessed and you want to take the place of the blesser. And dictate to the blesser the times and seasons when he should bless you. Lord, I've been with you. Why is it that you brought him out before you brought, him, brought me out? fail to understand that we are all called differently. That everyone is a different vessel for a different purpose. So 
So before it manifests, you see, it, it says, you have heard it say, let's go back to that. Verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. No, no, just stay there. That whosoever looketh on a man to lust after him, because it's not just about men, has committed adultery with him already in her heart. That the thought is just as equal to the deed. That there before they were waiting for the deed. That it's possible for a man to be so dirty in his heart. So hateful. So proud and self-lifting in his heart. But most of the times because it has not there's been no opportunity for a, a manifestation of that which they have harbored or treasured within. We think them holy. We think them, oh, this brother is very humble. But possibly is the most proud, arrogant. But because you look on the outside, Humility is not the way you carry yourself. Natembea kama umenyeshewa. Sema undugu ni nyenyekevu sana. You can walk with your chest out and be humble. Because I know the Bible tells me, let him who boast make his boast in the Lord. It doesn't stop me from boasting. It just gives me a context, a setting within which I'm supposed to boast. So he says, he who looks and thinks is already over the bar. That he who looks and thinks and cherishes the thought and keeps dwelling there. Let me help you. It's okay to look and appreciate. It just bears witness that you're a man, you're a woman. Some of you are so sanctified. You don't even see. Huh? Lord, just blind his eyes. Let him only have eyes for me. God gave me two eyes to see. Oh, please don't pray that the Lord blinds my eyes. It's not the seeing. It's what you do with the seed. Say, wow. Bless the Lord. See what the Lord has done. And I keep moving. But if I provide linger there and want to look again and look again and start thinking and imagining, then I'm straying. Say, wow, look at that tall, dark, handsome brother. What the Lord has made. And sister, you leave it there. But if, because some of us, <laughs> we are too holy even for God. Our standard is so high, even for God himself. 
That's why a lot of us get destroyed because we are so self-righteous that even when God forgives you, you can't forgive yourself. Say, how could I? Me, Emmanuel, how could I? Well, the Lord says, I write these things that you see not, and if you sin, know that there's an advocate with the Father. That if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you. But even after you've confessed, you're still here dealing with yourself. How could I? A lot of people have died spiritually because of self-righteousness. Because your standard is higher than God. You're more disappointed in the fact that you fell or you missed the way than in the fact that the grace of God has supplied what is needed for you to make right with God and continue with your journey. That happens even with us who sit here. When people this side miss it, say, how could he? Even when he's made right with God, how could he? Anyway, you can have your viako, when you have a person on a sema, vile vya buana vitoshi. Sema inaweza, inaweza kanaje, mchungaji. Ata ari ya metafuta amani na buwana, mefanya amani na buwana. But you're still there, holding them where they were last year.
impactful shall we be on our feet. Oh, Lord, we thank you. That we think on these things. Carefully guard your thoughts. For out of it are the issues of life. In somewhere in Proverbs 23, it says, my son, give me your heart. Give me the seat of your thoughts, not your substance. Because I know if you give me your heart, your substance stops being an issue. Give me the place from which life issues. Give me your heart. Lord, we thank you. You call to us to give you our hearts. To give you our minds. that our minds be stayed on you. That our minds be focused on you, on the things you've called us to, on what you've laid up for us, on what you've made provision for us not only to live out, become, and obtain Father, you've taught us, say in your word, that as a man thinks, so is he in his heart. That life flows naturally from the seat or from the fountain, from the seed of thought. Praise the Lord, you help us to order our thoughts the right way. That our hearts, our minds would be stayed on things that are true. Things that are pure, things that are honest. Things that are just, things that are praiseworthy things that are virtuous, that are lovely, that are good report. Pray that you help us to so guard our hearts, so guard our minds. That what grows in there, what dwells in there, will be such As to bring you praise and to bring you glory. We thank you and we bless you. Your hand is upon us, Lord, as we go into the rest of this day today. You say in your word, now that you know these things happy, blessed are you. If you do them, pray that Lord would take this word and allow it. Give it the conditions that are necessary for it to bring forth fruit and fruit that will remain. We thank you and we bless you. We declare that, Lord, your blessing is upon us. As we go into this week, 
great and effectual doors are open upon us. You are the saving strength of your anointed. Your salvation, Lord, is seen of our lives, of our families, of our businesses, over the work of our hands. You say they will not be ashamed that wait on you, that trust in you. As we exercise confidence in you and in your truth, in your word, pray that Father will have the opportunity to bring you glory and praise as we see you perform it in our lives and through our lives and the circumstances of our lives. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it, amen and amen. Have a blessed week ahead. Amen.